Good afternoon, Honorable Shea, fellow panelists, dignitaries, and your colleagues. My today's presentation is based on contemporary universal issue that is technological advances in warfare. And it is focuses on the legal challenges imposed by remote attacks and advanced weapon systems to international humanitarian law. So let me set the context for the today's topic. In Greek mythology, the parable of the cars illustrates the human desire to always go farther at the risk of colliding with the limitations of our nature. It also evokes the ambiguity to our thirst to knowledge and progress. While it took humankind thousands of years to make the cars and dream a reality, it took only decades to improve aeroplanes sufficiently for them to be used for many purposes causing immeasurable human suffering. The development of new means and methods of warfare must work on the new hand in hand with ethical thinking. It must also comply with the law. Unintentional humanitarian law states to have an obligation to determine the compatibility with international human law of a new weapon, means, and method of warfare in the study, development, acquisition, or adoption phases. Many means and methods of warfare have already been prohibited or they are used regularly throughout the history. For instance, blinding laser weapons were outlawed in 1995, even before their appearance in the battlefield. Today's presentation mainly focuses on international humanitarian law principles and projects of Geneva Convention of 1949 and its original protocol 1 of 1977, and why these provisions should be repealed and issue raised by contemporary developed warfare named autonomous weapons and remote attacks. First of all, it's essential to understand the fundamental principles of international humanitarian law. Distinction, humanity, mutual necessity, proportionality, precautionary measures, prohibition of attack, post combat, limitation. And when considering the legal instruments that the presentation is dealing with, they are Geneva Convention of 1949, comprised of four treaties, Additional Protocol 1 to Geneva Convention 1977, Convention on Certain Conventional weapons, CCW, which was imposed in 1983, and its additional protocol 1, 2, and 3. For the further understanding of the, of the subject content, it is essential to know what is meant by international humanitarian law, collateral damages, and mutual advantage. The real participation of hostilities refers to conduct which carried out by civilian suspects, this protection, and dangers arising from the mutual operations, and in the concept of revolving window should be highlighted. While science allows the automation of growing number of tasks related to conduct of hostilities, assessing their legality from the standpoint of international humanitarian law, remains firmly within the human realm. Certain features of these new technologies, however, raise utterly unprecedented issues that make the legality of an attack more difficult to ascertain. Moreover, the growing use of technology to conduct of hostilities raise complex issues of responsibility in view of the number of people, civilians, and soldiers involved in the process from the design to the use of the weapon in question. To whom should the responsibility be ascribed for an illegal attack by a robot? How can the fact finding be adopted to the increasing technical nature of the war? Can the proven technical failure absolve the operator of fault? In that case, should the machine designer be held responsible? To what degree can the extent as yet uncertain of the consequences of using nanotechnology weapons be taken into account? What degree uncertainty is legally acceptable? When considering the remote piloted vehicles and the laws prevailing with regard, the presentation mainly focuses on drones and unmanned aerial vehicles and unmanned airborne vehicles, which is known as UAVs. A big challenge in how we talk about the humanitarian consequences of this entangling the technology of today from the technology that is new. For instance, some people claim that the drones cannot take prisoners. During 1991, Gulf War, there was a final drone used by US Navy for targeting for naval gunfire. The Iraqis figured out that every time this little propeller plane flew about them, in a couple of minutes, all hell would break loose. The drone was scouting for the Second World War era battleship that fired 60 inches cannon shell that leveled everything within the radius of a football field. Here are some significant drone attacks and issues that have been reported. Armed drones pose a major threat to the general prohibition in interstate use of force and respect for human rights. On the battlefield, in a situation of armed conflict, the use of armed drones may be able to satisfy the fundamental international human rights law rules of distinction and proportionality. Away from the battlefield, the use of drones' rights will often amount to a violation of fundamental human rights. Greater clarity on the applicable regional regime, along with restraints 
participate in the further proliferation of drone technology are urgently needed. Potential, the use of drones on the battlefield is relatively uncontroversial under just in real or without prejudice to just add better because there are many stand practical differences between the use of cruise missiles or an aerial bombardment and the use of the drone equipped with explosive weapons. Whether or not the use of armed drones constitute aggression or legitimate self-defense should they take place within a situation of armed conflict and fulfill the relevant nexus criteria, they will also be judged on the applicable just in below, particular to potential humanitarian law. They will thus have to comply with at minimum potential humanitarian law rules applicable to conduct hostilities. In particular, those rules related to precaution attack, distinction, and proportionality. And they must not employ weapons, the use of which is unlawful to potential humanitarian law. If a strike is unlawful, could it be an example of a joint criminal enterprise on the international criminal law, or have one or more of the above related for arbitrary in an international crime? Of even greater concern is prospect of fully autonomous rules making target decisions based on series of programmed vectors potentially without any human control. Then, who is then to be held responsible, the manufacturer of drone or the software program? For the moment, there are far more questions than answers. Most of the rules of precaution attacks, which is qualified in 1977 Additional Protocol, one are of customary nature and are applicable to non international armed conflict as well as in international armed conflicts. Central among those rules is the obligation to take constant care in the conduct of military operations to spare the civilian population, civilians, and civilian objects. Article 57 of the protocol provides that those who plan or design upon an attack shall take all feasible precautions in the choice of means and methods of attack. And significant failure to have been reported, such as drone strike in Afghanistan in 2010, which killed 23 civilians, injuring another 12, by a predator drone by US Army. There is no any doubt that the prevailing legal provisions do not make any specific reference to the issues raised by contemporary technology rather than a general reference to overcome the real issues arose by international humanitarian law principles. Even if the target is lawful, the military objective on international humanitarian law, or the question of proportionality arises and may in the effect selection of means and methods of warfare that may lawfully be used, and even effectively prohibit an attack being launched, violating rule of proportionality is an indiscriminate attack according to 1977 National Protocol 1. The rule is not given voice in either common Article 3, which is not convention or 1977 National Protocol 2, but it is deemed to be the customary rule of international humanitarian law, applicable not only to international armed conflict, but also in armed conflicts of non international character. When shed light, light upon the autonomous attacks and laws prevailing with regard under this area, the presentation focuses on automated, autonomous, and remote weapon systems remote attacks, it should be noted that at outset there are currently need explicit, ex explicit provisions, provision of autonomous and remote weapon systems, no any general regulation for the deployment of situations of armed conflicts. Per se, yet there are key legal steps to be followed under international humanitarian law. International humanitarian law in conducted remote attacks, there was a potential for unmanned combat aerial vehicles UCA, UCABs to breach the specific treaty based restrictions because they are shared with most characteristics of the cruise missiles with the bombers. For example, ground launch cruise missiles with its certain mass parameter were prohibited under, under the intermediate range of nuclear forces treaty 1987. The nano weapons are hard to define, but encompasses not only subjects and devices using nanotechnology that are designed to be used for harming humans, but also for causing harmful effects in nanoscale. If those effects characterize the lethality of the weapon, the capacity of DME to cause untreatable and unnecessary suffering. The other concerns with the nanotechnology is that elements and chemicals that on the macro scale are not directly harmful to humans that be highly chemically reactive on the nanoscale. One of the legal consequences is needed to reappraise maintaining a legal distinction between chemical and biological weapons. It may mean that based on the manner which they can be used, we would legally believe these weapons as part of continuous biochemical threat spectrum with the Chemical Weapon Convention and Biological and Toxic Weapon Convention overlapping in 
There are coverage of respectful patients such as toxins and bioregulators. There are competing tensions in this area. Quite understandably, chemicals and biological weapons have, have bad names, yet unfortunately not been covered by a specific relevant legal framework. The Geneva Convention 1949 and the Additional Protocol of 1977 are the central documents in international humanitarian law and embody the fundamental principles of international humanitarian law. These documents these documents do not make specific reference to particular weapons so as to permit or prohibit their use, but rather through prescribing the principles of distinction, proportionality, and precaution, they are established the means and methods of warfare that can be lawfully employed in armed conflict. The principle of distinction between military and civilian objects forms cornerstone of potential humanitarian law, clearly articulated in Article 48 of Additional Protocol 1. This principle provides that in order to ensure in respect for the protection of civilian population and civilian objects, the parties to the conflict shall all time distinguish between civilian population and combatants. And accordingly, shall direct their operations only against major objectives. It is widely agreed that this principle has been incorporated in customary international humanitarian law as a law applicable in both international and non international armed conflict. Contemporary international humanitarian law is insufficient to regulate some technological advanced weapons. And that current legal categorization is challenged by the emergence of autonomous weapon systems that possess autonomous capabilities, insofar as both autonomous and remote weapon systems don't adequately fit in current categories of international humanitarian law. It may be that these systems should constitute should constitute now a common category. Both autonomous and remote weapons systems don't fit squarely within the legal understanding of a weapon and create subtle yet fundamental changes causing the legal understanding of means and methods of warfare. In intention humanitarian law terms, these advanced weapon systems is harshness and the concomitant, concomitant responsibility for their use is firmly established to incense device, compliance and forestall allegations of impunity. The need of, to establish an architecture for responsibility for the use of autonomous and remote weapon systems becomes specially acute where they use these allegations of intentional crimes. 